I knew I'd wanted to be a journalist, um, doing all sorts of different things. I actually wanted to be a war correspondent, which I went on to do later. But really, I became the internet guy at the time just through sheer luck. I mean, I was the youngest person in the newsroom, and I was the one who knew all about it. I'd been online since I was about 11 on bulletin boards, and then on the inter you know, and then on the internet. Um, and I'd done all sorts of interesting stuff online before, so I knew what I was, you know, I knew what it was about. And, and really, the call went up. You know, does anybody know about this internet thing? Ah, yes, young Hammersley, come on in. You know, and so I had, I was called to a meeting with the managing editor, who said, uh, he, he said, why, why do you want to be a journalist? And I said, well, it's, it's indoor work with no heavy lifting. And he said, mm, bloody good. How much do you want to be paid? You know, I remember interviewing in the, in the bar in the Aldwych, um, in the one Aldwych Hotel in London, um, just off the Strand, um, these two crazed, crazy um, American college students who were starting this thesis project. They were turning into this search engine that had this really weird name called Google, and they were kind of, kind of you know, hopeful that this would be a thing. Whilst, whilst I was very jealous of all of my colleagues who were in Kosovo, for example, I, um, I was reporting on the story of the century, really. You know, I was reporting about the internet, the birth of the internet. Very, very early on in this decade, or last decade, um, I realized that there were certain things that were happening to journalism uh, which were going to make the thing I wanted to do really, really interesting. It's going to be radically transformed by the fact that one day soon, not right then, not in 2000, but one day soon you could be a, a single journalist with a backpack, with, enough st with only a backpack's worth of gear to be able to report multimedially, if that's a word, um, from anywhere on the planet. Around 1999-2000, I started uh, teaching myself programming and um, all those sorts of new content management technologies that, we, that were coming out then, which would, which would turn into blogging. Uh, the most famous one for me was RSS, which is the sort of syndication standard, and I wrote, I wrote um, two books on that and, and all of that sort of stuff because I got in there quite early and... and help pioneer some of that stuff. Anyway, the, all of that was based around the idea that, that if I could push that state of the art forward, eventually when the cameras and the laptops and the power system, you know, all that sort of stuff, and the connectivity, satellite phones, whatever, um, eventually caught up with the idea, there would also be some easy to use software that I could use to go and do it. The thing that, that I'm most excited about is what some people are calling casual computing or um, simple computing or something like that, which is the, the sort of device which is exemplified by the Apple iPad. Chances are your laptop is going to be probably a work laptop, or if it's not a work laptop, it's going to be a couple of years old. It's going to be big and plastic and black, and it's going to have cooling fans in it. You know, it's an industrial piece of gear. It's like, it's like having an electric drill on your knee. And so at the moment, you have all of the stuff that the internet gives you, all of the, you know, the, the, the information, the leisure, the social networking, all of that sort of stuff, being funneled to you through basically a workplace tool that you've kind of borrowed. And so, of course, there's a whole large proportion of the of the of the country you know of the population that and anywhere in the sort of developed world who are looking at this and saying this internet thing you know it's not really for me because it's actually just not very elegant and then you have things like the iPad which are completely the opposite they're beautiful and they're simple and they're dedicated to the thing you want to do, not to you know, supporting an IT department. The technology business has done itself a massive disservice over the past 10 years, huge disservice, in that 
it fetishized the geek. It's allowed the industry to sort of run away with itself and really alienate everybody else. And that's, over the next 12 months, I think that is going to radically change. Radically change. And when that happens, then all of the social changes we've been seeing, you know, changes to the music industry, changes to the media industry, changes to the, changes to education, changes to travel, changes to government, changes to politics, changes, all of that sort of stuff. All of those things that we've been talking about based on the usage patterns of like the top 5% of technologically enabled people, all of that stuff is going to go absolutely berserk. If the end user starts hearing words like HTML5, we have made a, a, once again made a massive, massive mistake. In the same way as it, it drives me to, uh, you know, cup throwing anger whenever I see a TV advert for, you know, uh, you know, electronics retailers, you know, PC World, for example, and they'll always have some voiceover that says, you know, yes, it's always some. Say, I bought a laptop. It's got a, it's got a six gigahertz processor and twenty five fling de flops and blip de blop de blip de blip de blop. You like, even the person doing the voiceover has no idea what those numbers mean. The first 15 years, or the first, yeah, certainly the first 15 years of the web, it was kind of like people inventing how, you know, it's, we had to whittle our own paintbrushes before we could paint the picture. And now we have really beautiful paintbrushes and really beautiful paints, and somebody's prepared a really nice canvas for us. And now we can paint stuff. Now we have the tools, um, we can actually start forgetting about them. In the same way it's happened in any other industry, in the same way it's happened in motoring, for example, there came a time when you didn't need to have a toolkit anymore to drive a car. Things like HTML5, absolutely fantastic. And they're absolutely fantastic in that they will lead us into this glorious future where we don't need to know about HTML5 anymore. Budding is a content management system. It's a, it's a system for, that allows journalists and writers, journalists, writers, and editors to um, produce content which can then be reused in many different formats, whether it's print, an iPhone application, an ebook, a website, a hologram, talking robot, whatever the technology is. If I'm writing an article for Wired magazine at the moment, I would file however many words it is as a Word document and email it to the editor. And it, in that article, I may well mention people and concepts and places and dates and all of that. In print, it doesn't matter. In online, it would be really useful for those people and concepts and dates and so on to be somehow semantically meaningful to the content management system that does the online bit so that it could link through to every other mention of that person's name or every other mention. And for a mobile application, if I've mentioned a place, it would be really useful to have the latitude and longitude of that place embedded in the original copy so that the mobile app can say, hey, you're nearby you know, that particular bar or you're nearby whatever. For publishing houses to be able to get to the glorious future of the bright, shiny, multiple outlet publication, their workflow, the way that they get copy in from their writers, the way they handle it, has got to be able to handle not just the words, but all of the metadata that surrounds it. And at the moment, they can't do that. And what Budding does is provides the tools for the writer to write stories in that way and provides a tool for the publishing house and the editors and so on to handle all of that data and then output it in a way that makes, it, makes all of these new and interesting outlets possible.